your field of study is not what perhaps we think of a serious philosopher as engaging in, right? I mean, social networking, is there really enough sort of ethical juice and, and importance for this to, to attract uh, attention? So I'm sure there's gonna be lots of interesting issues, but before we get too far, let's just get clear on what social networking is. Sure. The best way to think about social networking is in sort of the following way. And you have a group of friends, right? I imagine maybe if you're in a biking club or a running club or something to that effect, there are, um, you, have, you, have, you engage with various friends on various levels and, um, and you get together with each of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe the, you know, one group one weekend, another group another weekend, hunting, let's say, or something, whatever you might have you. With this type of social network, what we're speaking of is sort of a virtual social network where okay. you engage with all of these different groups of friends through some sort of online internet platform okay. on the World Wide Web. The most popular among them would include Twitter, Facebook, right. LinkedIn is one popular with business um, uh, people. Um, I think there's also something called academia.edu for academics like ourselves, right? <laughs> so uh, that's sort of a, a niche uh, group. But these are all different kinds of ways that you can interact with different kinds of people, different people with whom you uh, want to have a, a relationship with, and not in, in, a, in a strong sense of relationship, <laughs> but just sort of a friendly relationship online. Okay, okay. So I can start to imagine how this can get pretty complicated in, in a moral sense, but I think rather than heading to the abstract, let's, let's kind of get something concrete going here. And okay. you were... You were suggesting earlier this notion, uh, a case, a case in, in Michigan. Can you just give a little outline and see if maybe we can use that as a foundation? Certainly. One of the biggest concerns with online social networking is uh, deception, some form of deception or lying. And there's a good case. Uh, in fact, there's a film made uh, about hmm. this case. In fact, there were three filmmakers who got duped uh, online, as you say, or duped. In, uh, and they made a film called Catfish. Um, the basic overview, I mean, I'd recommend the movie to go out and see it. It's sort of a documentary of this person who fell in love with these online profiles through Facebook, through okay. MySpace, uh, fell in love with this woman. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out that after he went in search of this woman in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, found out there was no such woman <laughs> and was really um, mortified by it. Uh -huh. and of course, heartbroken and, sure. uh, and every sort of feeling or emotion you could, you could expect, he, it seemed that he had them um, because he had been deceived online. Okay, so, so he meets this imaginary woman online and there's a woman at the other end who's Creating there is, in fact, okay. yeah, there is, in fact, a woman who's creating all these fictitious characters. Okay. One in particular is a fictitious character. I mean, the, the one he falls in love okay. with. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't do a whole lot of social networking, but I'm pretty skeptical of what I read online. Is how much of this is is him just being naive, or maybe even a little bit stupid to have taken the bait? I mean, don't most people? maintain a pretty high level of dubiousness about this and you'd so was it all that. her fault yeah, right. here right no no I, you'd expect that you'd have some sort of like skepticism when sure. you meet someone online um, particularly one as beautiful as the profile was <laughs> uh, i mean this person in fact is a model right um and so yeah you'd expect them to have some skepticism and uh the other thing is is that i mean the three filmmakers were living in new york i mean Talk about the most skeptical people of all, uh, living in New York and being filmmakers and whatnot. You'd expect them to be like, well, wait a minute, this just seems too good to be true. But I think it was the way in which this person had deceived them. The person in Michigan had deceived them. Mm -hmm. they, he really, they, the, the bait was a, a so-called young eight-year-old girl named Abby um, who um, ended up playing bait and saying, hey, I'm an eight-year-old girl, I make these pretty pictures and sing songs and whatnot, and, I mean, paintings, and paintings mm -hmm. are just uh, fantastic, I have a personal opinion there, but um, plays, uh, you know, makes these paintings, puts them up online, sends them to him, um, and then so starts this relationship with this one person and the fictitious character. Oh, and so, the fictitious yeah. character. So. Um, so, and it, it got so bad uh, that, in fact, uh, they will find out through the course of the movie, the documentary, that um, the woman made an entire family, an entire oh. mini social microcosm of a social network for herself with um, people, um, brothers, sisters, babysitters, um, friends of the family, all these people, but all who are fictitious. So maybe it would be naive to say that the person got suckered into it. But I think that in all honesty, the, the egregious form of deception that this person used was quite out of line. And well, okay, so she 
went pretty far, but don't we all deceive one another to a certain extent in social settings? We all try to look a little bit better, sound a little bit smarter, be a little bit better informed than we really are. So isn't deception sort of a, a standard practice in, in, in uh, real as, a, as well as in virtual social networks? Is deception of that sort wrong? If that's the case, then we're all in deep trouble, right? I think we are all in deep trouble, in <laughs> fact. That's absolutely right. I mean, one of the things that uh, I think I like to point out, especially um, in forms of deception, different forms of deception are important for becoming better friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, uh, you know, we could put a, play a practical joke on one another. That's a form of deception. Right. And until I reveal to you that I had played this practical joke on you and I meant it merely as uh, not to cause you such harm, right? Uh, it would otherwise be just in a form of deception, not unlike the lying or the sort of form of deception that this woman had used on, online. So yeah, I think it is, and deception is an integral part of our lives, and some forms are worse than others. The question is, at what, what point do we, uh, what, where's the boundary between being morally reprehensible and something that's more morally permissible? Mm -hmm. I think, and that's a harder line to draw. Is, is the line different for a social, virtual, because it's called a virtual social network than it is if we're just sitting around a table or we're at a party, right? Sure, sure. And we're trying to make ourselves look good and whatnot. Is mm -hmm. it the same sort of, what's, is there a difference? Does the, does the virtual element change the formula or the, the ethical uh, context in an important way? I think it changes the formula in the following way. We don't know how, we don't know the consequence, we don't know the side effects, we know nothing about this virtual online networking. It's new to us, right? It's yeah. not like the sort of thing that we, you have, you're making friends in, in real time, let's call it real time versus virtual. Okay. So in your real time social network, <laughs> you know, you get to know someone over the course of period, you know, over course of period of time, and you know, they do certain things that are you know, good or bad, you know, you, you get a chance to judge them. With online or virtual social networks, it's harder to figure out who the person is, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not directly seeing them all the time. You're only seeing like a profile picture. Okay. I mean, it's sort of like reading a book over and over again. It doesn't, it doesn't change all that dramatically, but in a sense, you're not, you're not let in on who the author is as much as you are in this face-to-face -face contact. So I think it's a, a young, in the virtual social network, it's a young, uh, we're still learning about how to interact, how to, we're developing friendships online. So you use the word author, I like that, I like that. So should we just think of, of social networks or virtual social networks as just being fiction? In which case, mm -hmm. look, you know, mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. reads a book of, I mean, sometimes fiction makes us cry and it makes us laugh, but we really don't think there's really right. this character. We don't take it as autobiographical or, or right. anything of that sort. So uh, is that the solution? Let's just take all of this stuff as fiction, read it like fiction, and then there's no harm, no foul? Well, that's, that's, I think it's harder to decipher than that. I mean, certainly there are cases of profiles, right, on, on, and on an so, online social network where you sort of go, yeah, this is clearly a fiction. But um, there are also um, people who have their profiles representing themselves in some way, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's harder, it's harder to discern between the person who's just sort of a mere um, uh, fiction and someone who's accurately representing themselves online through the social network. And I think that it would be problematic not only for the person who's the author of the profile, right, mm -hmm. um, but it would also be problematic for the friends of them to, to say, oh, that's just a fiction. I mean, you don't want, you know, if you post something like, you know, I had a terrible day at work and, uh, you know. I, I was I, diagnosed I, with cancer. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you don't sort of, you, 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 want don't, sympathy, you don't want right? to, you know, you don't want to press the like button on that one for the Facebook profile page. The, the people will be like, what? You'd like this status? No. <laughs> You've just heard that your friend has cancer. This is a terrible situation, right? And you know, you'd want to send your condolences. I would, or at least say, say, you know, how, you know, what sort of ways can I help out? You know, mm -hmm. um, what forms of uh, treatment are you receiving? Do you need to find a, you know, a good oncologist in, in the area? I mean, so I mean, that's what you'd expect, but you know, it'd be very weird to just say that's yeah, fictitious. Yeah, completely. I can, I can play, yeah. <laughs> So, so one last question here. I mean, the other thing that's kind of interesting here is, so she lies online, he gets hurt. Right, mm -hmm. so we want to blame her, and we want to say, well, maybe he was a little naive. Does the online provider does do they, do they take uh, any responsibility right. here? I mean, when I throw a party and people lie to each other, it's not like I feel, you know, <laughs> that I'm right. responsible. But is right. so so when someone does something bad online or hurts another person, how how do we go about policing that or yeah. or or compensating or or even dealing with it in an ethical sense? Yeah. yeah, that's really a hard question. I mean, this is a question of like paternalism. How much? Uh, oversight should the provider, should say Facebook or Twitter, 
or however the case may be, Craigslist. And Craigslist mm -hmm. was, a, was a, in the news quite a bit uh, the last few years over this. You know, how much oversight should they have? Should they be permitting people to even post something like this? So, you know, something in a fictitious profile. Should they be uh, engaging in sort of policing, as you say, um, the various profile um, to make sure that they're accurately reflecting someone in the, the actual world, mm -hmm. in the real time, right, the social network? And you know it's hard to say exactly how much oversight they should have. I mean, we're, we're autonomous agents. We want to we want to rule ourselves. And if we want to make up a fictitious profile page, maybe because we're a big fan of Norma Shearer or uh, Clark Gable, then by all means, maybe we should have that uh, ability. But we should also, I think, make it. You know, we, the responsibility is on us to make sure that others know that, in fact. We're not actually Clark Gable. He's been dead <laughs> for quite a long time. Uh, um, and we're not Norma Shear in the same sense. That they've been dead quite a long time. But we need to make sure that people know that. I mean, it's sort of be, so full disclosure, I think, would be the best uh, option here. Well, I want to thank you for coming in. I want to thank you for coming in because if I had done this online, I certainly couldn't have uh, believed anything that you told me. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, so thank you much. very much, Jeff. Appreciate it.